everyone. I'm Amy Connell. Thanks for tuning in to Lessons to My Teenage Self, a Christ-centered, diet culture-free show about all things health for teen girls. This is the shortcut you need to thrive in your physical, mental, and spiritual health. As a personal trainer and nutrition coach, I'm passionate about empowering you to find your best version of health. Each week, we dig into one topic that I wish I had known as a teen. Hey, welcome back to our little two part series on how to listen to your body. If you missed last week, I encourage you to go back and listen to the first five ways that you can listen to your body. And today I am going to cover the next five numbers six through 10. Let's dig in. Number six is energy. Now this is going to kind of go along with your sleep quality and it kind of goes along with your foggy brain, but how's your energy throughout the day? Your energy can be an indication of food. Uh, Maybe you again need more nutrients. Maybe you need to add some variety with some fruits and vegetables. It might be an indication of hydration. So maybe you just need to have an extra glass of water or some other fluid to get fluid in you. Maybe it is poor sleep, which we have talked about. And maybe it's that you just kind of need to move a little more. Now, I am not saying go run a marathon. I am not saying that a little more more means doing a hard workout. But it just means getting our body moving, the blood flowing, the heart pumping just a bit harder. And what this does is it takes the oxygen that we are breathing in and delivers it to the rest of our body. My freshman year of college, we had required study hall. I don't think that they do that anymore. But when I was in college, we had required study hall. It was 50 minutes. So 50 minutes equaled one hour if you wanted to have so many hours of study hall. And sometimes, if I'm honest, during the 50 minutes, I would get really sleepy. I'm not really sure how I knew this. I guess it was just something intuitive. But during those 10 minutes, I would get up, I would go outside, I would run down two blocks to the stoplight, I would turn around and run back. And that really helped my energy level. It wasn't like it was any kind of formal exercise or anything like that, but it just kind of got things moving. So that is something to consider as well. Like how is your energy level? And is there something that might need a little bit of tweaking? Number seven is your cravings. At my first job, I worked with a woman who had a daughter who at the time was probably like eight. And she told me, my daughter's a vegetarian but every now and then she wants to go to McDonald's. And so we go to McDonald's and I said, well, that's interesting. She said, yeah, it's the funniest thing. She never, ever wants meat, but every now and then she wants to go to McDonald's and then she'll just say, ah, I needed that. And to me, that's a wonderful example of our body just saying, okay, I need something different. Now, I don't know this girl, but knowing what I know now, maybe it is that she needed some red meat and she needed, she needed some iron. Maybe it's that she just needed some more energy and more calories for that day. Or maybe she needed a little more dietary fat. So there's a lot of different reasons, but I think those cravings are something to pay attention to. I do admit going through the drive through or going into McDonald's and getting a Big Mac or a cheeseburger or something like that isn't going to give you the wide variety of nutrients that maybe your body is needing. Whereas if you had a homemade hamburger or you had something else with some red meat, and I'm just using this example, but so I don't want to get into that. If you want to learn about my philosophy on why there's no good or bad foods, you can go back to episode three of this show and learn about that with finding food freedom with a mindset shift about foods. But my point is, if you are craving something, it's worth listening to. And then from there, you can make your own nutritional decisions. Maybe it's that you're just going to enjoy the hamburger wherever it comes from. Or maybe it's that, okay, I think maybe what I'm needing is some protein. How can I get some more protein in my body? My older son, as I'm recording this, has finished his first two years of college. And while he was home before he went to his 
uh, summer ministry, he said, mom, I am so tired of eating fast food. Like I just need some homemade food. I need some vegetables. I need some salads. And so that may be something that your body's trying to tell you like, Hey, we've been having a lot of this, but I really would like a big salad. And honestly, I just lived through this last week. I was on vacation. I was traveling. I was eating out a lot. And by about day four, whenever we went out, I thought, I need a salad. <laughs> and I could feel my body craving the nutrients in a salad. It doesn't mean that the other foods were bad. It was just meaning that my body was needing something like that. Cravings are a good thing to pay attention to because it is your body saying what it needs. Along those same lines is number eight, hunger. Now, probably if I asked you, well, how do you know if you're hungry? You might say, well, my stomach starts grumbling. And yes, that is one sign of hunger, but there are some more subtle signs of hunger. Maybe you're having difficulty concentrating. Um, you might be kind of getting a little irritable, uh, not quite at that hangry state, but just a little testy. I can get that way as well. Maybe you're feeling low energy or you've got a bit of a headache, or maybe all of a sudden you're just thinking a lot about food. These are all, and this isn't all of them, but these are just some signs that, hey, we need to stop and we need to eat. And I would say that if your body is asking for energy, give it energy. If you have grown up in a home that focuses on nutritionally dense foods, and if those are readily available, then yeah, take them. But if not, I would still say some energy is better than no energy. If your body's asking for food, please feed it. Even if it doesn't seem like it's the right time, which there's never a wrong time. Our bodies are not robots. If you are getting ready to go to bed and you think, oh, I'll just have breakfast in the morning. I encourage you to eat, fill your body. You don't have to have a ton, but just give it something because it's, it's saying, Hey, I'm having a hard time operating. Please give me some fuel to put in it. So if you're hungry, then that is your body saying, I need some energy and please pay attention to that and listen to it. Number nine is your mood. Now this can be a huge spectrum of reasons. And I will say we all go through periods where we are feeling uh, great and maybe we are feeling less than great. And some of that is actually related to our periods and to our hormones. So those are, those are normal and those are natural, but if your mood is consistently down for a while, it might be worth thinking, okay, am I, do I have a safe place to talk about my emotions or my feelings? Am I getting these out? Even if it's just in a journal, or maybe it's a locked note on your phone. It also may be related to sleep it may actually even be related to sunlight. Like, have you gotten outside and gotten in the sun lately? I mean, it seems so simple, but there is a lot of science that goes along with how the sunshine can affect our mood. And I know this is just scratching the surface, but if you're consistently feeling down, then again, I think it's an invitation to just be curious with yourself. Like, why am I feeling this way? And I can't not say that it is not only okay, but admirable to ask for help, either from a counselor or from a trusted adult or your parent, if you are consistently feeling down. So please ask for help if you're just not feeling yourself. And there may be some things that you can do with your body to help, or it may be that your brain just needs a little bit of assistance, either from counseling or if your doctor determines medication, but all of these are okay and wonderful ways to help our body feel and function well. But if you're feeling consistently like not yourself, then that is a sign that is something that your body is trying to communicate with you. I wish I had all the answers and I wish I had all of the things to do if you are feeling that way, but I can just tell you that it is common and there are people available to help. And finally, how's your skin? How's your complexion? Now look, I remember thinking as a teen, oh, I can't wait until I'm older because then I won't have zits. 
And I swear I had zits up into my early 40s. And I still every now and then get things. So we will naturally have blemishes when we are in our adolescent phase. Of course, we're going to have acne. But if your skin is all of a sudden acting up, Or if it's just looking a little different or feeling different, maybe it's feeling dry, or you're all of a sudden having some really, really bad acne that's different than what you used to have, that may be something as well. The best advice I can give you, which is probably not going to be news to you, is drink a lot of water and try and put a lot of plants in your body because the plants are what support our gut microbiome, which is what supports so much of our body and making sure that everything is stable, for lack of a better word. So those are kind of the two things I know you've probably, you're probably like, I know, Amy, I get this. So I'm sorry that it probably sounds redundant, but those are the two things that I can offer you for skin and complexion. And of course, do things like, you know, wash the makeup all your, off your face before you go to bed. I'm not an esthetician. I am not a dermatologist. So I don't feel like it's really um, in my wheelhouse to be talking about skincare. But I will tell you that when we drink enough water, and when we have plenty of plants and a variety of plants, that can definitely help our skin. And so if we if our skin is acting up, then it might be worth considering like, okay, well, have I been doing these two things? Okay, those are over the course of the last two weeks, the 10 ways to listen to your body. So I'm going to recap them really quickly. Number one, sleep quality. Number two, athletic and fitness performance. Number three, foggy brain or brain fog. Number four, waste. Number five, gassiness. Number six, energy. Seven, cravings. Eight, hunger nine, mood, and 10, skin or complexion. I hope those have helped you. And I hope that this guides you in paying attention to what your body may be trying to tell you and responding to it as well. And you're not going to get all of this right, all right at first, but it's a good step to understanding your body. Okay, that's all for today. Take today's lesson and go out there and live the life God has for you and your amazing original body. Thanks for tuning in today. Do you have a question you would like answered here on the Lessons to My Teenage Self podcast? If so, go to the show notes where you will see an anonymous form you can fill out and that question may be answered here on the show. Also, if this show is valuable to you, could you do one of two things that are enormously valuable to me? Number one, share it with a friend. Just take a screenshot, send it to her, or you can go to the show and send it straight from there. Also, if you can provide a rating and review, particularly if you listen to your uh, podcasts in Apple Podcasts. Thanks again and see you next time.